place for politics. I want a totally inclusive country, and I want an inclusive party. We reject the bigotry of Hillary Clinton, who sees people of color only as votes, not as human beings worthy of a better future. Donald Trump debuted a striking new tone last night in Virginia, asking African Americans to, quote, honor him with their votes and vowing to make the GOP accessible to them once more. But what's behind this kinder, gentler Trump, and will it last? Let's bring in Robert Trainum, former Bush Cheney senior advisor and an MSNBC contributor, Jason Johnson, politics editor at The Root and Sirius XM contributor, and Raul Reyes, attorney and NBCNews.com contributor. Hello, fellas. Good to see you all. Hey Thanks there. for Hello joining there. me. See you, Alex. Okay, um, first of all, is anyone going to accept this new inclusive Trump. Jason, let's start with you. No, but okay. that's not really why he's doing it. I mean, look, let, let's be honest. Donald Trump has been the same guy for 10 years. Uh, there are literally people who work with him on The Apprentice who are saying that he should not be elected president. But what I do think is important is this. Look, he is at least trying. Uh, if you're trying to be president of the United States for everybody, you need to campaign for everybody's vote. But I think with 79 days left before the election, the likelihood that he will be able to peel away African-American Republicans that he has offended, mm. Latino Republicans that he's offended to come back to the fold, it seems very unlikely. Picking up on that number 79 with you, Robert, why now for this pivot? I mean, Trump has never done well with the minority vote in the polls. So what makes him think that he can change that? I mean, 79 days before the election, that is a relatively short period of time. It's a, it's a very, very steep hill to climb, Alex. And here's, I have two thoughts. One, uh, hmm. look, 0% uh, or 1%, depending on which, which poll you take a look at, uh, has a favorable rating of, of, of Donald Trump in the African-American community. So it's virtually zero. But I have a sneaky suspicion. I'm not sure this is about getting African-American votes. I actually think this is about getting moderate Republican votes and moderate uh, white individuals or white Democratic votes that say, hmm, you know, perhaps maybe I should be a little bit more sympathetic to Donald Trump. At least he's trying. Uh, so it's not about the black vote, per se. I think it's about the Republican moderates and the Democratic moderates that in intuitively may want to go with Trump because he's the anti-establishment candidate, but are just absolutely mortified by all of the comments that he's made over the last couple of months mm -hmm. about about uh, people with, that are disabled, about women and so forth. So this is not, again, about African-American strategy. I think this is more about ginning up Republican votes, very similar to the Nixon strategy back in 1972. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's a very specific strategy there, mm -hmm. Rule. I mean, do you agree with what Robert's offering up? Because certainly on the surface, this just seems kind of bizarre, right. making a plea to minority voters in front of mostly white crowds. Well, I would agree, uh, certainly to a certain extent, because m my take is that this newfound interest in African American voters and Latino voters it is is to reassure uh, uh, some of his base that he is indeed still running a viable national campaign is to reassure certain members of the Republican establishment that his numbers are not going to tank so much that it leading them to possibly abandon him. So it's just to show up, I think, observers that he still has a shot with these groups. And what's interesting, you mentioned that he debuted this new, new tone among for Latinos this week. At, last week as well, he debuted a new commercial. And in this commercial, you saw the same old very anti-immigrant rhetoric. You saw this imagery of people sneaking over the border and there were claims about uh, undocumented people stealing votes and, and accessing health care, neither of which have, have been uh, backed up. And it, the, the numbers, when you just look at the numbers among Latinos, it's, it's almost, I would say, a strategic waste of his time to be doing this. Fox News Latino gives Hillary Clinton 66 points, Donald Trump, I believe, 20. The NBC News Wall Street Journal poll uh, has the margin even higher, with 76 percent of Latinos going for Clinton, only 14 percent going for Trump. And meanwhile, we have the, the, the former head of Breitbart, now advising the campaign. Mm -hmm. Breitbart is a news outlet that defended Trump's criticism of Judge Curiel. They made fun of Jeb Bush's wife because she spoke English with an accent, and they have continuously vilified immigrants and calling them illegal aliens and, you know, yeah. all sorts of dangerous, you know, unpleasant rhetoric. So that's yeah. the reality. Uh, Jason, reality-wise here, it is almost certain that Trump is not going to overtake Clinton among the black voters right. between now and November. So we had Robert offering up the appeal to more moderate okay. GOPs. What do you think his goal is, and how how many of the minority votes does he need to actually pull off a win? Well, th those are two really important things, Alex. N number one, uh, Donald Trump is doing this. I don't think he's trying to get moderate white voters. I, I don't think he's trying to ensure donors. I think that his campaign is delusional enough 
that they actually think that if they do this, they can actually get, like I said, primarily African-American Republicans and Latinos to come back. Remember, you've got guys like Chris Christie and John Kasich who got upwards of 10, 12 percent of black voters in their state. So there are black Republicans out there. He just somehow thinks he can get them back. He's got to get those numbers. But here's where it's really key, Alex, not just for Trump, but for the GOP in general. This is an election year. People don't split ticket vote. So if right. Trump is getting mm -hmm. negative percent of Latino voters in Pennsylvania, that's going to hurt Pat Toomey. If Trump is getting mm -hmm. zero percent of black voters, that's going to hurt Rob Portman in Ohio. So these are down ballot right. rescue missions that he's getting on. Yeah, something that the RNC is certainly focusing on right now. Um, so Trump also met yesterday with his newly uh, created Hispanic Advisory Council, reportedly asking them for suggestions on how to handle undocumented immigrants beyond just deporting them, as he has certainly advocated for before. Raul, do you think we're going to see a substantive policy change from him on immigration? And if so, you think that's enough to win some Latino votes after well, all he said? I'm just going to uh, address your first question and go out on a limb and say no. We, we, we did hear uh, over what the limb? weekend since this meeting that, uh, there, that there was some talk of a new approach and that he was open to legalization and a humane uh, approach to his, to his plans. And yet within the day, the Trump campaign pushed back and said, no, he is not changing his immigration policies. He's, not, he's still going to build a wall, he still is going to end DACA and deport all the undocumented people in the country. So even the Trump campaign has squelched some of the early reporting that we've, he we've heard from people who were at that meeting. Okay. Robert, whether or not Trump wins in November, has he made it harder for the GOP as a whole to appeal to minority voter voters? Rather, Do you think he's going to have a lasting impact, at least in that respect? Donald Trump regardless of whether or not he wins or not in November, has damaged the Republican brand uh, to levels that I have not seen in generations. Uh, the fact of the matter is, is that when you say these things that he said during the primary about building a wall, uh, it's not just African Americans and Latinos, Alex, it's with women. Uh, we know what he said about the people uh, that are disabled. You, you can't say these things and, and think that you can just get away with it. And the Republican Party has had a deficit, as we know, for many, many years, probably since Jack Kemp of trying to reach out and trying to be considerate and trying to be compassionate, trying to be empathetic. And what Donald Trump has said over the last couple of months is absolutely deplorable, in my humble opinion, as an African American, as a conservative, and as a member of the LGBT community. So there's, got to, there's, there's so much work that needs to be done after November. And just don't take my word for it. Take, listen to Jeb Bush. Listen to Marco Rubio. Listen to John Kasich. Listen to Paul Ryan and how he struggled with whether or not he should endorse this person or not. So these are just not my words. These are the Republicans' words uh, all across the country. All right, gentlemen, Robert, Jason, Roll, you guys, thank you so much. Great thank chat. You, Appreciate Alex. it. Thanks, Alex. Thank, thank you. Time.